got it. Yeah. Yes, everybody. Hope everybody had a wonderful week. We can tell it's getting close to summertime. So, uh, you know, can y'all hear me back there, Orville? No. Okay. <laughs> One, two, one, two. Can you hear me? Okay. Anyway, uh, it was a uh, very hard week for Robbie. As uh, Brother Bobby went on to be with the Lord, he had been praying that, that the Lord would take him, and the Lord did. You know, sometimes death is such a blessing whenever you're miserable and you're not getting any better. Then it's, then it's a good time to cry out to God. And uh, we just want to lift Robbie up this week and pray for her. And the funeral will be June the 15th at Hazel Land. Is that right, Robbie? Yeah. So at 10 o'clock. So if you're planning on attending, be sure to write that down. Are the church members going to bring food to that? Okay. They're, after the service, it's going to be here. Okay. Yes. We're going to have a meeting of committee members for the kitchen today. Okay. Right after church, just a minute to decide when we want to have another meeting. Okay. Okay. So a short meeting with the kitchen committee, and uh, that's a wonderful place to jump in and help serve and let God use you. So it's going to be right after the service, a short meeting. Okay, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, we thank you for this new week. We thank you, Lord, that you were there with Robbie and uh, that you were there with Tammy and Britt and Terry. And, Lord, that your grace abounded there. We thank you, Lord, that you say you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. And I give testimony that you were there with Brother Bobby and with Robbie. And Lord, we thank you that it won't be long and we'll see Bobby again. And uh, Lord, so we just thank you that death for a Christian is just walking into the new eternal life that you have prepared for us. And Father, I pray that you'll continue to give Robbie your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, that you will comfort and direct the family. Father, we just exalt you, we praise you, we thank you, and all the other needs that you know about in your congregation here at Thousora. Thank you, Lord, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Okay, Brother Robert. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we'll start with our prayer request. Anybody decide? Yes, ma'am. Uh, continue to keep my sister-in-law Sandy in your prayers. She's able to walk short distances, but it's with pain. So she's still in rehab and probably going to be there a while. Well, I, also, what happened to her? We have no idea. Okay. She, wow. she just one day got up she couldn't walk. Um, also, our home church, we went there last Sunday. And for a church that holds 200 people, there were 17. And it just breaks my heart. Oh my. Where are they at? They're in Fort Worth. So they're surrounded by big mega churches. And it's just a small church in yeah. a residential area. But it's a beautiful, loving little church. It's just. Nobody coming. Not a lot. Y'all have a name? Terrace Acres Baptist Church. Say it again. Terrace Acres Baptist Church. Anybody else? I got a praise. I got a new job. Yeah. Praise God. Wow. Miss Tina? Yes, I got a praise and a request. Uh, last night there was a tornado went through the pilot point at that lake. The president <laughs> was there in his RV. All the RVs around him were flipped upside down and into the trees. He only had a scratch on his truck. Man, yeah, bless the Lord. Praise God. Yeah. 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 Her uh, son. Oh, okay. Was that Marshall? Marshall. Marshall. James. Oh, James. Okay. Yeah. Bless the Lord. You had a, also a request or just a praise? Well, the, the request was for the people that. For all the people affected, yeah. Yeah. Tornado victims. Okay. Um, Christy? I, I kind of want to add to hers. Um, 
I'm an, I don't know if anybody knows, but I'm an insurance agent over there in Denton County, and I had several of my clients that were hit by that tornado. I think right now but about 60 people are still missing. They're doing oh, wow. search and rescue, so, um, and there's six or seven that have been found dead. So, just, I mean, it was pretty bad. We'll get all the tornado It was in Valley and uh, the same thing, uh, uh, yeah, it, it was pretty bad. And then I have a, just some unspoken for myself. How many died? I think they said six or seven, but there's still 60 people missing. Yes, ma'am. Tammy and I will be going to Macadocious for a family reunion and prayers for safe travels. Yeah. Amen. I think there's a lot of people traveling this week. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Who had a baby? Jan and Mike. Jan and Mike. Uh, we were praying for Harriet, so she's still asking for prayer on that because she still has. They haven't seen much progress. Okay. So she still has the button. Oh, gotcha. her So that she can digest her food and they were hoping to see more progress by now. That baby's name is Harriet? Harriet, yes sir. I remember I just I remember praying for her but I'm named the scam. Yes ma'am. Well, that's spoken also. Okay. Yes ma'am. Anybody else? We've got um yes, Ellie's ma'am. back in the hospital at Cook's with a <coughs> bad infection. They don't know where it's coming from, so Right. That's it. Cool. We'll just take it to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. My husband, Lonnie Hobbs, needs some That's encouragement to come to church. Let's no just pray that the oh, Lord okay. just kick him in the, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> okay. It's what I'm doing anymore. <clears throat> All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you again for this day, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your covenant promises, for your patience, your long-suffering, for the gift of salvation, yes, Father. Lord. And, Lord, you've heard every need, and we just bring them before you right now, Father. We pray for Sandy, Lord. We pray for, Lord, that you would just not only bring healing to her, but, Lord, you'd give the doctors understanding and wisdom. Uh, Lord, just that you would increase her faith throughout this trial. We pray for the whole church of Terrace Acres, Father. We, in fact, we just pray for all our churches, Lord, all the home churches, all the body of Christ, Father. Lord, that you would draw each and every one of us, Lord, and give us a hunger, a thirst for righteousness, and a yeah. desire to gather together and fulfill your promises and fulfill your callings, Father, in our yes, lives, Lord. Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the victories that we have, Lord, for yes. the, the blessings and the jobs, for keeping the people safe. Yeah. And Lord, we just pray for those, Father, that were impacted, Lord, by these tornadoes. We just lift up each and every victim, each and every family, Father. Yeah. We ask that you would be with them, that you would bless them, that you would direct their steps, Father. Yeah. And Lord, you would let them understand, Lord, your work in these things. Yes. And Lord, that, you, that your will is accomplished sometimes in tragedy for us, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we just ask that you give that understanding and peace, Father, for yes. all those things. We pray for the unspoken prayers, Father. Lord, you know every need. Yes. We pray for the travel, Father, you, for every congregant, for every member and every body of Christ, wherever yes. they are, Father, as they move about, Lord, that you'd go before them and make their way safe, Father. We lift up this child, Harriet, Father. Lord, we just know that, George, your will is working in this somehow, Father. We pray, Father, that victory would come to this family, that, Lord, you would give healing and health. Let this child, Lord, live a life that is godly and before you, Father, that, Lord, that your would be glorified in her life. Yes. We pray, Father, for Ellie. And Lord, this little girl has been through so much. And we just ask you, Lord, that you bring a complete healing in her body, Father. And Lord, that you would continue to use this family to magnify your name. And we lift up Brother Lonnie, Lord. Lord, he needs encouragement. Lord, we all need encouragement for many things, Father. But Lord, we pray for those who, Lord, are yours and who would be absent. Lord, yes. from the, from the uh, congregation, Lord, you said that, Lord, we should be together, Lord, that we yes. should gather, in order to worship you, to encourage one yes. another, Father. Lord, we pray for this nation. We pray yes. for godly leaders, Father, that, Lord, you would appoint 
those that were Lord hunger and thirst for righteousness, Lord God, yes. those that would seek Your face, Father. Yes, Father. We pray that Lord Jesus, You would reign in the hearts of yes. men in this nation, Father. We pray, Father, for Israel and peace for Jerusalem. Yes. We pray for the salvation of all Jewish people. And we also ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that Lord, You would have mercy on our enemies, and Lord, turn them also to repentance, Father. Lord, we love You. We lift up Brother Sonny up, Lord, as he preaches the gospel today, yes. Father. That Lord, You would prepare yes. our hearts. The Lord, you would mold us in your image yes. through the hearing and obedience to your word. And it's yes. in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, just real quick, we're going to continue on in Proverbs uh, chapter 1. And we're going to read uh, eight, verses 8 through 19, and then I'll hand it over to Brother Eric. Proverbs 1, verses 8 through 19. Remember, we want to. The, the proverbs are just simple truth. They're the, just the truth. It's not promises. It's the truth. Yes. And we want to read this as God is speaking to us as His children, and children as your parents are speaking to you. <coughs> Verse eight, my son, hear the instruction of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. <coughs> Little kids, children, young people, that's honor. You'll find honor by obeying your parents. That's what that's telling you. You'll be honorable. It's honorable to listen to your parents, do what your parents say. Because they're looking out for you. They know what's best for you. As God leads them, they're going to lead you. So listen to your parents. Okay? And then also for us adults, we're still God's children. It's important for us to do what the Word of God says. We're going to follow God. Okay? God is our Father. It says, My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, Come with us, let us lie and wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like shoal and whole like those who go down to the pit. If you find yourselves young people, especially you that are in school, you've got kids, other kids that are going to try to bring you into a sinful situation to plan and plot for uh, sinful things, sinful desires, speaking against people, just to lead you astray. Remember what your parents say. Remember what the Word of God says. Don't partake in that. In fact, you need to get away from those. Those are not your friends. And it's no different for us as adults. There's people that we're going to work with. There's people that we're going to come across that's going to want to go do something that's ungodly. And just stay away from them and tell them about themselves. Tell them it's okay to tell people about sin. It's okay to tell people about hell. We should be telling them. All right? That's what the Lord's telling us. To stay away from that. Avoid those situations. Avoid those people. He said, we shall find, if they shall say, we shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us. Let us all have one purse. He's talking about plundering. It's like you see the looters that we've seen these last 10 years, I guess, or 8 years and uh, all these looters and these gangs and these just it's just lawlessness. We want to stay away from those people. Right. Tell them about right. themselves. Tell them. Tell them it's sin. Tell them it's, uh, it's going to lead them to hell and have no part in it. Have no part in it. He said, My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. But they lie in wait for their own blood. So the, a net in the side of a bird. A bird's not going to fly into a net. And so God's given us this clear warning, right? When you see people that are headed in the wrong direction, don't take no part with them. Yeah, take, stay away from that. Don't join in just because everybody else is doing it. God's called you to be set apart. You're different than everybody else in the world. Amen. Don't forget that. Right. So let your light shine before <clears> men. He says, they lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. And that is a good reflection of Matthew 16, 26. It says, for what profit it is to a man who gains the whole world but loses his own soul. Don't do it. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. The big thing today is the bullying. Yeah, bullying. Right. Bullying. Yeah. I don't know about that, but I believe yeah. it. Oh, they do. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Wicked. All right, good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we will stand.
And we'll sing uh, number 571, Trust and Obey, number 571.
a couple more pages to number 581. Number 581. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Amen. We'll sing a one, two, and four. <clears throat> church building that's going up over there. Yes, Lord. And the word is that in about nine weeks we're going to be moving into that. Amen. Lord, I just pray that each and every member of our congregation will feel like they've had a part in building that church. Amen. Yes. And that they are a part of that church. Yes. And that they have a say in what goes on. Yes. And Lord, we just pray that this church will be God's vision. Amen. We want God's vision more than anything. Yes, Father. And we don't want to put that new wine in old wine skins. That's right. And Lord, we just thank you for the miracle of building that church. Amen. And we know that that church is not the answer. That's right. We know that it's the people that are going to yes. be in that church. Yes. And if we're going to evangelize southwestern Wise County, we need your vision. Amen. Yes, we need Lord. your vision, and we yes. need to have our hearts prepared to yes. accept that vision yes, and move forward. Amen. Lord, we're just thankful for every person in this building. Yes, just Lord. ask you bless them this Praise coming name, week. Lord. Lord, our nation's in bad shape. Yes. We just pray that you would be with the leaders yes, and the future leaders yes. and the people that are voting. Yes. Just have them vote their hearts yes, Lord. and you just prepare their hearts yes. and just send your Holy Spirit among our nation to yes, speak to Father. these people Help us, Lord. and Lord we're just thankful for the Holy Spirit here at our congregation yes, and we just ask and want him to feel welcome any Thank day you, and Lord we just ask that his presence be here today Yes, Lord. Lord I'm just thankful for everything Yes, Praise your name. and we just ask you to bless us Yes. And be with us this coming week and guide our steps. Yes. In Jesus' yeah. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
thing that we want um, because our needs are taken care of. It's our wants that, that we need to fight Excellent. with every day. So um, the missions are important. There are people out there spreading the gospel. Um, so today I'm going to read um, about Noelson and Ed, Edna Cherry. And they are in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Noelson Cherry already had a demanding job and a busy life. He wasn't looking to add to it. The Cherries live in Philadelphia. Nolson works remotely as an academic advisor. It's 40 long hours a week. He says, that's why my wife, a respiratory therapist, and I resisted. Nolson and Edna are Haitian immigrants, and in 2019, they discovered that most Haitian churches in their community worshiped only in Haitian Creole. They became church planters in the most unintentional of ways. Everything in the churches was done for adults, whether the kids can speak Creole or not. Noelson says, so we started Bible study in English with our kids at home. When other Haitian families learned what the cherries were doing, they asked to join them. It wasn't our plan, but we couldn't say no, Edna says. And soon our street was filled with cars. Mm -hmm. Now they've planted a Haitian church that's making <clears throat> Jesus known and specifically <clears throat> reaching the younger generations. And the cherries have second jobs they didn't even know they needed. The Lord has blown my mind, Nelson said. Despite our busy lives and careers, nothing excites us more than this ministry. Amen. We need to pray for Nelson to have time and energy to devote to First Haitian Metanola Baptist Church. 
We need to pray for a dedicated space where their new church can meet and do ministry. Mm -hmm. And we need to pray for the growth of mentoring relationships between young and older believers in the yes. church. So if you'll keep them in your prayers, right now we'll bow our heads and we'll pray for these, this couple. <coughs> Heavenly Father, I lift up Noelson and Edna Cherry. Father, what a mighty work you're doing in their lives and, the, and your word is spreading and it's growing. And Father, when your word goes forth, people grow and people you just bring salvation father and yes it's by no other way Amen. so father we don't have passports father we can't travel but we can get on our knees and we can pray we can join yes. in prayer together father yes. and pray for this couple to do mighty things in your name to grow up the church, Father. Send forth these children. Yes. Bring these communities together, Father, yes. that they may sing and praise you. Praise your holy name. And it's yes. in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Yes. There were two evangelists that were murdered in Haiti. Oh, oh my goodness. This last week. Mm. Young couple. Two evangelists were murdered in Haiti this last week, so we need to pray for them. You know, we do live in an exceptionally violent society now, and uh, it is imperative that you stay close to the Lord, you ask God to protect your family and watch over you, and that we witness. You know, the, the days are getting shorter and shorter till the Lord's return and time is dwindling down. And we know that God has us here for a purpose. He wants us to witness and he watches over us as we ask him to. And you know, God knew we were gonna be here during this time. So he has blessed us and equipped us to be everything he wants us to be. What a wonderful day to share Jesus. What a wonderful time that we're going to have walking through our community where I would say probably 80, 85% of them do not know the Lord. And uh, I wish it was more than that, but it's just not. And uh, it is becoming foreign in America to follow Jesus. So we have a great mission field and we need the workers to go into the field that he will direct our outreach and that he will give us wisdom in what's the most effective way to do it. We've had a lot of times through the years that it's just been glorious to go out and share. Even though we've not seen a lot of fruit from it, we grow as individuals and we have a great joy in doing what God has called us to do. Now, as we're going through the book of Luke, we kind of stopped off at Luke chapter 4, and we were talking about Jesus is the picture of a spirit-filled Christian. Now we know he didn't need to do this, but he went to John the Baptist and he was baptized. And remember when Jesus came up out of the Jordan River, what happened? The Holy Spirit descended upon him. Now, this wasn't just a happenstance. This was very clearly God's teaching us how we're to live the Christian life. So as the Holy Spirit filled him, then he was led by the Spirit. Now, we are just like Christ as Christians. We receive the Holy Spirit. Then we ask God to lead and direct us in what he would have us to do. You know, God has a plan for your life. And I pray that you will ask him to direct you and to use you because that's where the greatest joy in life is, is letting God live in you and live through you. So Jesus was filled. He was led to the wilderness. And of course, we know Satan met him in the wilderness to do battle. Now, before we get further into Luke, last week we started through 1 John. 
And you might say, well, what does that have to do with what we're looking at in Luke? Well, what it has to do is we live in the age of deception. Satan is a deceiver. 90% of what we listen to on the television or the radio, you cannot believe. We are surrounded by politicians who lie. We are surrounded by different leaders in our community who lie. We are surrounded by those who want nothing to do with God. And so they try to push their humanist manifesto down our throat to not let God have anything to do within the school system. And as we see this, then we see a great separation taking place in society. The Fort Worth public school system where Lindy and I went to school, they are now having to close down different campuses because thank God, the Lord has made a way for parents to get their kids out of public education and to fund their education in Christian schools. And I think that is wonderful. We all talk about that. Because in an age of deception, we want our kids to hear the truth. And we're going to have an excellent opportunity when we get to the new building to start to build from scratch our youth department and our children's department. And even right now, we need to pray that God will raise up a couple that could lead that wonderful ministry and impart the truth of God's word to our young people. Now, God is beginning to draw young people into the church. We thought it was never going to happen, but here came Victor and his family. We praise God for them, and we pray that God will lead more and more young people into our church Amen. so we can minister to a lost and dying community. So, turn if you would to 1 John again, chapter 2. And we are going to see that in this age of deception, we have Jesus as the Spirit-filled man. He's God in the flesh, showing us how to live. And then we have Satan desperately trying to deceive our communities, to deceive our, deceive our young people, and to lead them in the wrong direction. So there is a war going on. Now, I know Scripture says, you don't have to turn there, but in Matthew 7, Jesus said, it's a narrow road that leads down a narrow path that leads to heaven. And he said, there are few on that road. He said, it's a wide, broad highway that leads to hell. And he says, most people are on that road. So we have to discern and say, which road am I on? How do we know what the right road is? Well, when we pray and when we trust in the Lord and we have that relationship going on with Him, God will begin to lead us down the path that He wants us to go on. First of all, you got to read the Bible. You have to spend time in prayer. I'm not saying you have to spend an hour a day doing that, but when you first get up, say a prayer. Commit your life to the Lord that day. And then ask God to lead you in what he wants you to read in the Bible. The book of John is a wonderful place to start. And why is it necessary to be in the Bible? Because your spirit man needs to hear the word of God. You need to grow spiritually. It's a spiritual battle. It's like a white dog and a black dog are fighting. And the white dog is the spiritual part. The black dog is the evil part. And they're fighting and fighting and fighting. And which one wins? It's the one that gets fed the most. Which one are you feeding? You've got your fleshly appetites that wants you to do wicked things. Drugs, alcohol, fentanyl, all these wicked things that are available to us. 
And then you have the narrow road where God is saying, come over here, walk with me. Let's fellowship together. Let me grow you and protect you. And we have a choice. God gives us free will. So here I want to read a little part about the deception that is taking place and the fact that God is trying to make sure we stay on the narrow road. He says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, what does he mean by do not love the world? What, is it, what does it mean to love the world? Somebody tell me. Worldly things. Worldly things. Like what, Amber? Anything mm -hmm. flesh. Our flesh wants certain things. When we're young, we'd like a house. When we're young people with kids, we'd like good schools. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the world system says this. You deserve this. You deserve that. You deserve there. You need to go on vacations here. You need to have two cars. On and on and on it goes. And what is the world system trying to get you to do? They want to get you bound up in debt. And when you are bound up in debt, what happens? If you're a young married couple, it can destroy your marriage quickly. There's nothing worse than owing a bunch of money and every day feeling the weight of that debt ruining your life. I remember we would go through a part of our young marriage life, and I never really knew how much money we had in the bank. Lenita kept up with it for us. And I would go and buy something, and that would reject my card. And I'd say, call her up. What's wrong? What's going on? And we would have miscommunication with each other, and we would have difficulties, and it strained the marriage. How many of y'all ever had problems like that? You know, we had too much month and not enough money to get us through it. So, it was horrible. And the world system is telling you that's the way to go. Did many of you hear about the football player last week or a week before that started proclaiming that most women want to get married, they want to have kids, and they want to follow the Lord. Boy, was he ripped apart for daring to say that. The world doesn't want to hear that message. They want the message of the world to wrap you up and make you miserable. Greed. Yes. So we need to keep our eyes upon the Lord. We need to listen to the truth. What is the truth? God's Word is the truth. You can trust every bit of God's Word. But you might say, well, Brother Sonny, I don't understand it. That's what we're here for. That's why you have my phone number. If I don't know it, I'll find out for you and I'll get a hold of it. So we need to make a commitment. Don't listen to the world. Don't get in debt. Love each other. Follow each other. Jesus said a new commandment I give you that you love one another. So we need to love one another. Then he says in 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life. Now what does that mean, the lust of the flesh? I can tell you one of my main problems. Mom and I are going through Walmart and we, get, we start over there with the nose spray and stuff. We get over to the dogs, we feed more to our dogs than we feed to ourselves. <laughs> and then we get around over there to the ice cream area. <laughs> and it's like it's calling my name. Sonny, get some ice cream. Sonny, you won't get fat from that ice cream. You know what? That little old gallon of ice cream can put 20 pounds on you and nothing flat. And then it takes forever to get it off. So we all battle with the desires of the flesh. How do we overcome the desires of the flesh? By the power of the Holy Spirit. 
He can help you to do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. So when you are tempted, maybe you're a girl wanting a boyfriend. Maybe you're a guy wanting a girlfriend. And you're tempted and you're looking and you're lusting. You've got to pray and say, God, take away that thought. Take control of my eyes. Take control of my mouth. You get around your buddies and they want you to cuss and talk filthy. Break away from them. Get friends that are for you and aren't dragging you down the road to hell. Uh, so, he says the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life. And that's like saying, look what I got. Look at our house. Look at my new truck. Look at what I got. You know, we get into a, a way of saying, that I've got to work, 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 and then I get fancy things and I want to show them off to everybody about what I got. Let me tell you, what do you take with you when you die? Nothing. The new truck stays behind. The house stays behind. For men, the wife usually stays behind. And don't worry, she'll find her a new husband pretty quick. So we have all these things that are going on. Don't focus on the wrong things in life. There are eternal things that can go with you. When you give to the Lord through the offering, that is a, imputed to your account up in glory. God knows what you're doing. God knows your heart. God knows every thought you have before you have it. But God gives you the victory through Jesus Christ. So, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away, and also its lust. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. How many of y'all want to live forever? Then do what God says in His Word. You know, Jesus in John 14, over and over and over again, He says, if you love me, you'll what? You'll obey me. And I will walk with you. And I will come and live in you. Me and God the Father and the Holy Spirit. We will all make our home in you. Now why would God want to do that? So us. that he enables you to live the life which he calls you to live. We don't have the power in and of ourselves to do what God wants us to do. But with God the Holy Spirit we have more than enough power to be victorious over the enemy, over the flesh, over the devil. Nothing can hinder you through Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. God all shout about that. And then he says as he goes on, chapter 3, look at verse 1. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we would be called the children of God. And such we are for this reason. The world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not appeared as yet what we will be, but we know that when He appears, what? We're going to be like Him because we've obeyed Him, we've listened to Him, we've followed Him, and we will be like the Lord. And everyone who has this hope fixed on Him does what? Purifies himself just as he is pure. Listen to verse 4, and this is where we get down to the most important part. Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Now, what does that mean, practices? Now, when we were growing up, we, Lenita and I were in band. And we would have to get up early in the morning and get out there and practice marching. Over and over we'd practice where do we go, where do we turn, where do we stand, memorize our music, practice, 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 practice till it's all drilled in. Now, listen to what God is saying, a Christian practices. Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. In other words, he says, if you follow the devil, the flesh, the world, 
then you are practicing sinful habits. How many of y'all have ever practiced sinful habits? We all Everybody have. Here. We didn't want to, but we did the wrong thing and ended up on the wrong road. And we were following the world. We were practicing sin. We were going through the world and saying, I can not cuss that guy. I can rip off that person. I can do this, that, and the other, and better than you. Practicing over and over and over. And he said, you know, verse 5, that he appeared in order to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or knows him. Now, Satan says, do what you feel like doing. Live your own way. You deserve it. Grab all the gusto you can. Be rich. Live fine. Live in death. That's all right. And that will lead to a miserable life. And that will bind you up. And the enemy will have you right where he wants you. How many of y'all agree with that? Amen. That's what sin does. And he makes it very clear. The one who practices sin practices lawlessness. You know, I remember you could drink two or three beers whenever I was younger and you start buzzing pretty good. You drink four or five and you're really gone off the deep end. You know, it's a gradual thing that Satan does to wrap us up in bondage. Amen? You know today, bless those kids' hearts, marijuana is available. And it's not like it was when we were kids. It was just a light deal and you're good and you think you're hip. I went to see the Moody Blues. Most of y'all, they were passing joints down the road there. We all were so cool. We're so hip. You know what? We were so dumb and stupid doing just what the devil wanted us to do. And you know, we were not following the Lord. And if we had died in that state, we would have gone to hell. Now, practicing sexual things outside of marriage, God says it's sin. And if you practice that, in other words, the homosexual, they say, well, you know what? I can be a homosexual and be a Christian. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. Because the Bible says... You're practicing a sinful habit. You're not crying out to the Lord and saying, Lord, help me to get out of this mess. Help me to walk and live the way you want me to. Help me to overcome these wicked, evil desires. Isn't that right? Yeah. And when we do that and humble ourselves, God will deliver us from it. But if we don't, we are practicing sin, and God says, you're not a Christian. You can go to church once in a while. You can read your Bible once in a while, but that's not going to get you there. Practicing sin leads to death and hell, and you go to hell and you spend eternity there. Now, you know, most churches don't want to preach on sin. They want everybody to feel good, but you know what? That sin is like a cancer that is eating you up and you are dying. And if you die that way, you're going to go to hell. Amen? Amen? But if you say, Lord, help me, throw out the lifeline, get me out of this stuff, change the desires of my heart. Amen? God can deliver you from anything, but you have to call out to him. He says, Verse 6, no one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or knows him. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. Now, deceiving people. In Matthew 7, let's just turn there for a minute. Matthew chapter 7. This is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible because it just lays out the truth. It says, verse 7, verse 15. Our knowledge to start with 14. He said, 13. <laughs> we'll get there. 7, 13, Matthew. They're all good. They're all good. Enter through the narrow gate. For the narrow gate is wide. 
and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through the wide gate, for the gate is small, and the way is narrow that leads to life, eternal life, and there are how many that find it? Few. Few. So if you go along with the crowd, if you go the way the crowd is going, you're going to end up in hell because there are few people on the narrow road, but most of the world is on the broad road. Verse 15, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. I've never seen so many apostate churches as I see the day on the television. All they want is your money. Oh, just plant your seed in my ministry and God's going to give you back a hundredfold. It's like a slot machine. Bing, 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 bing. But you know what? The only one getting rich is, is the preacher. And you can tell he is because he has jets. He has big houses. He has all the things that he dangles in front of you. If you'll only do what I did, you'll be right there with me. You know what? That is Satan deceiving you. And I would not want to be in that preacher's shoes when judgment day is come. Look what he says. Beware of false prophets, 15, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them how? By their fruit. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles are they. So every good tree does what? Bears good fruit. But every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Yeah. So then you will know them how by their fruits. Now, all these rich ministers, all these healing ministers, that say that they have the unlimited power of God to pray for you and you can get up out of that wheelchair. You can be delivered from that deadly disease. You can do this, that, and the other. They are liars. Because if they had that power of God, they would walk through a hospital and they'd empty it out. That's just what Jesus did. Everyone that was brought to him, he healed them all. Amen? That is a true one. It's a false one that we have today that believes that. Now, can God heal anybody? Yes, he can. Yes. And God doesn't even have to have a rich preacher to do it. God can have a lowly, down-and-out preacher that he uses his power to glorify his name through them. Look at what he says in 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. Look what he says. And then I will declare to them... I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. You know what? It does me no joy to read these verses of Scripture to you. But what it does, it alleviates me of the responsibility of you ending up in hell. I want you to understand very clearly, if it sounds too good to be true, Chances are it's not true. And especially in the days that we're living in. How many of y'all read on the internet and they offer you this deal and that deal and blah, 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 blah. And it sounds so great. It sounds so good. Invest your money in this. And it turns out they rip you off. Has that ever happened to anybody? Well, it's happened to me. So... Walk the straight and narrow road. Read your Bible so you can hear the Word of God, what Jesus is saying to you. And you know what will happen? You'll have joy on your journey. And you will end up in the house of God. 
with so much joy, just like Brother Bobby is in right now. Amen. When you're a Christian following the Lord, there is no greater joy in life. He who follows the Lord has been set free from the bondage of sin. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for helping us to go through these scriptures. Help us to dig a little deeper so that we might understand that indeed we are in the last days and there are deceptive practices going on all around us. Lord, help us to walk in a way that we glorify your name. Lord, keep us on the straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life. And Father, we just love you, we praise you, we thank you for all that you're doing. And we praise you as you continue to build your church at Balzora. Lord, we commit these things to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Maybe God has spoken to your heart something that you're involved in and you need to get out of. Come to the front and pray with me. Whatever God is leading you to do, why don't you do it in these moments? The Lord is here. He loves you beyond words. All you have to do is cry out. And let's stand. We're going to sing a hymn invitation. What number here? Number 489. Number 489. Pass it on.
Well, I appreciate the good way you listened this morning, and I'll tell you what, the truth will set you free. And there is joy in the journey as we follow the Lord. So, any other announcements we need to make? Robbie. Brother Sonny, I want to thank everybody for the good food they brought to us. Yeah, the prayers, the visitation to Bobby, he enjoyed it so much. One heart beat away. And just everything that the church has been so helpful to us. God, thank you. And I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. We love Robbie and we miss Bobby, but won't be long. We'll see him again. Any other announcements we need to make? All right, let's stand. We're going to be dismissed, Brother Eric. All right, let's stand. We're going to be dismissed, Brother Eric. One last song, and then we'll be dismissed. It'll be uh, number 353, Victory in Jesus, the last verse in the chorus. Mm -hmm.